Welcome to another video. Uh, this video is the really the start of a very different set of videos than, than what I've done previously. This one's going to be a series on Microsoft Access. Now, Microsoft Access has been a tool that I have used ever since the 1990s when it was Access 2.0. And I've grown up with Access until it finally became a, a piece of the uh, Microsoft Office uh, suite. And uh, ultimately has taken its place as one of the managers of data that uh, are used alongside Excel and Word. And frankly, uh, I consider it a very strong contender to, uh, to Excel in the respect that finance people are beginning in their master's programs to start learning um, about Microsoft Access as well as Microsoft Excel. So the, these business people not don't just go straight into uh, the business world and all they know is Excel. They're learning also how to how to program and access and how to how to build tables and uh, how to house data uh, in such a way that it uh, makes more sense. Um, it makes a makes good sense as an anal analyzer of data um, as well because it allows you to put it in separate tables, link them together. And it allows you to dump a whole ton of data in and manage that data through canned queries that you've already built. So many times I will use it as a, a repository of data that, get, that I pull from a data warehouse, for example, and um, then analyze that data to pull the reports and put them together. And then sometimes their final resting place may be a spreadsheet. Um, but in essence, what it'll end up doing is allows me to pre-can certain forms and certain imports and exports and um, get all of those things in line so that all I have to do is pull the data and then Access will put it in the format that I uh, that I need it to be to, to put in the final reports, whether it be a spreadsheet or, or a PowerPoint presentation or such. So as such, uh, let's go down here and uh, open Microsoft Access. You see I have it here on my taskbar. Um, it'll also appear up here in the A's uh, when you look at your Windows menu. So opening it up here from the taskbar, it opens pretty quickly. And you'll notice that it has very, very much the same uh, look and feel as a um, any of the Microsoft Office suite. So Word and PowerPoint and Excel will all have this same sort of uh, dashboard and allows you to open a blank document here. Um, Access does have a bunch of pre-canned databases that you can play around with and uh, are already linked and have forms and reports already um, already built for you, which uh, is kind of a, a neat jump off point if you want to just go from a, a level uh, standard that's already pre-built. So I'm going to just double click on blank database here. And as it opens up, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, save it to this default file name. It'll save it in your My Documents folder, or it'll save it into the place that you have designated to be the saving place in Access. And we'll talk about where you can, where you can set that later. So I'll hit the create button and you'll notice that what it does is it creates a table for you and opens that table. And the table only has an auto number ID field at this point, um, but it allows you to click and add another field by telling it what kind of field you want it to be. Uh, here we can make this with a short text. And let's say that this is going to be the first name field for our uh, for a, a, a list of names or database. Um, database list of names here. So then we can go ahead and uh, go ahead and make this a text field as well and make this a lost name. And so there, there is one way that you can uh, that you can build another table. And, and what Access does is because it's a relational database management system, it is a management system that allows you to have multiple tables, multiple forms, queries, um, reports, all embedded in the single uh, Microsoft Access container file. 
Um, and we'll get into many of those elements as we uh, evolve through uh, this particular set of videos. So it, relational database ma management systems manage data in related tables, and generally you separate those tables by subject matter. So the tables all have what they would refer to as fields. Here I put a first name field and a last name field, and here is a key field, the ID. And if we looked at the design view of that, you'll see that um, this ID field has a key right here. And that key indicates that this is the key field. And we'll get into a lot of what primary keys and foreign keys mean uh, as we go farther into, uh, into the sets of videos that I'm going to create. Queries extract information from the, uh, from the database. Uh, that's what allows you to have it in separate tables. So you have all the names in one table. Uh, these, this might be a client list or maybe your employee list. And then you have all the uh, state names, for example, you'd have 50 uh, state names in a table. And then uh, having those 50 state names in a table, you would just refer to it. So where does this person live? You choose one of the 50 states if you know that this database is only going to apply to the United States. Or you could have a list of countries and uh, counties and so forth. Now, you also can create many other elements. Like over here, there's a whole bunch of macros that you can build along with visual basic modules. Uh, and classes so that during your development, if you can't um, develop something in a query to do what you needed to do, you can run it through a visual basic model to module to um, to massage or move the data around in ways that a query isn't well adapted to. And we'll we'll get into that because that that can tend to be the uh, actually the most fun part of managing an access database. Now, as you develop a database, the last topic I'd like to cover here is, is basically a, a five-step design method. And this five-step design method starts with looking at your overall design. So if I was developing a, a database for a bookstore, for example, uh, the bookstore would need a certain number of elements. It would need a certain number of reports and these data elements, and you would interview your customer and determine what the uh, need is for the customer. So the need is really all about the output. What do you ultimately need this database to do for you? What information do you need to store? What reports, what entities, what, um, what government reports do you need to put out uh, of the database? So you come up with an overall design of the database, and then you start working on what kind of data needs to be in each of those reports, and you're kind of working backwards. And then you're going to know what data needs to be in the separate tables, because you know what needs to ultimately be in the reports. So you back go backwards from what they need in the reports to the, uh, to the data. And once you know what data needs to be in there, you can then make a relational database um, schema that has the data in the separate tables in it. And then you just make sure that all the fields are taken into account, separated into each one of those separate tables. And then once you have all the table design done, then you would link forms to it and build forms to um, then do your data input forms to open your reports and send those reports out to uh, to Excel or to PowerPoint or to just to your screen or to your printer. Uh, the flexibility for report design is uh, quite, uh, quite robust in the, in the system. So that's really all I had for this particular video. Kind of a quick overview how to open it and what it can do and what you need to do to, to start thinking about what you want to accomplish uh, when you develop your database. Uh, and until the next video, uh, please subscribe so that you know when that next video comes out. And uh, we'll see you again later. Thanks.